Comedy Central presents Nate Bargetti. Yes, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Wow, everybody. Crazy. I'm proud of every one of you, all right? Every one of you I'm proud of. <laughs> Different. It is great to be here. Very fun to be in New York. I, uh, I live here, so that's why it's fun. <laughs> I am from Tennessee, though, originally, and I still have a little bit of an accent, because like, people hear it, and they always come up, and they're always like, oh, what's up, where's your accent from? I'm like, Tennessee. Like, oh, that's cool. I have a cousin that lives in Florida. <laughs> like, all right. I don't even... <laughs> Are we just naming states? Is that what's going on? I don't know what. When I moved to New York, though, what's funny is, like, New York acts like it's a big melting pot because it's, like, all the different cultures. Oh, we all melt together and everything. And then you move here, and you realize, like, it's not a melting pot at all. It's actually a bunch of pots that want to live next to their own kinds of pots. <laughs> and not talk to other pots. Yeah. It's good stuff. It's good. My landlord is a Chinese pot, and... <laughs> which is fun. <laughs> she, she only hires, like, old Chinese dudes to fix her stuff, so... Like, when they come over, like, they don't speak English, and, like, I'm not gonna learn another language. Uh, I have barely knocked this one out, so. So when he fixes stuff, like, you gotta just hope he does the right thing, you know, because you can't tell him not. Like, if he comes over and starts fixing the couch, you're like, all right, I guess that's what he's fixing today. I don't know why we would ask him to do that, but. One day he came over and our gas heat broke, so he comes over to fix it, and I'm standing outside, and I see him, like, he's, like, downstairs, and you see, like, a fireball just explode, like, at him. So, like, it, like, lights it. he runs outside, and you get, like, we're both standing there, and you could just see that, like, we both wish we could talk to each other at that point. <laughs> we're just, like... <sighs> okay. That's all I got. I got nothing. Nothing. I miss this. I miss going down there. Like I, I like miss like being able to go to Walmart very easily. I'm a Walmart guy. I like them. A lot of people don't like Walmart. They say it's big business. Like it kills the mom and pop shops. But really, Walmart they were a mom and pop shop at some point, and then they got their act together and became <laughs> unbelievable. So, yeah, I just stuck with them. They're always open. Mom and pop shops close for no reason. You go in there, you're like, why are you closed today? They're like, we're sad. You're like, all right, that's not even, that's not even a legit, legit thing. Walmart, you could shoot the entire staff. It would be an hour of confusion and they'd be up and running again. That's how great Walmart is. It's unbelievable. The best. Went to school in Tennessee, which was fun. I went, I went to a community college for an entire year, and I do not have one credit. <laughs> it didn't, like, none of it counted. The reason is because I had to take remedial classes, so, which remedial basically means they're like, look, we have no idea how your high school that you leave, <laughs> and we are shocked, and we're actually gonna look into it. <laughs> but, but until the end, here's your classes you're gonna take. Here's what I took. I took math, like, like, I don't, like the book said math. <laughs> like that's what, <laughs> how crazy is that? They stopped calling it math after like sixth grade. I, <laughs> I had to take reading, I took reading. I drove to that class, I drove to a reading class. I'm not even an immigrant, I am from here. I should have knocked that out years ago. And with reading, I think they were just impressed when you made it to the class. They were like, look who made it today, buddy. You're like, fun, you guys. You guys are good. The best. 
it always like it shot down my dream because I wanted to play college basketball and <laughs> that that didn't work out. It didn't work out because I got cut every year for my high school basketball team. So I had to play for my church because, yeah, the church cannot cut you. They have to let you play, which is nice. That's a good, you know, they would be, I guess they could cut you. You'd be pretty bad if they're like, look, we think you're good, but Jesus does not think you're that good. Yeah, he is our captain, so. And church ball was a lot different, too, because we played, it was a half court, no three-point line. We played on carpet. That's your first sign. It's not going to count. And they didn't give us a basketball. We didn't have a ball. Like, we would just stand out there and play on honesty. So you'd be like, I just made it. It was like, oh, that's a good shot. You're really good. I stole it. I forgive you for stealing it. It was moral points. It counts later. You have to be careful. I, I just read about, uh, there's this new device you can buy for your car, and it's got, it's like a keyless device, and as you press it, it's got a heartbeat detector on it. So you aim it at your car, you press it. If it flashes, that means, like, someone is in your car, and they're going to kill you, all right? <laughs> it's not going to be good. So you press it. If you want to buy it, it's like 550 bucks. If... You do not have that money. You can do the old school route, which is just look in the window. That, it's either way, really. It's up to you. I told one guy that, he tried to tell me that was for like when people leave their babies in the car. Like, you know, like when you go out and you're like, I cannot remember if I brought my baby today. And I don't wanna walk all the way back and check. Like, what if it's not there? If it's not there, I'm gonna look like a jackass in front of my friends. I wish I could check secretly without everybody knowing. <laughs> Here's my method for if someone's gonna hide in my car and they're gonna kill me. It's a huge fear of mine. So what I do is uh, right when I start my car, I have Journey, Don't Stop Believing in my CD player. So right when I start it, it's right on the Don't Stop Believing part. Because that's a great song. Like, you couldn't commit a murder to that song. That is that good of a song. That guy would want to, and then he would, like, just be furious. He'd just get up and be like, look, that's a, that's a really good tune, all right? You got me. And then he'd climb up front with you, and you become friends. And that's, that's just a neat story. They'd be like, how do you know Dennis? Dennis, he was a murderer. Turns out, pretty big Journey fan. Actually a good guy once you get to know him. He's good. He's good. He's a good guy. I've got to travel a lot, which is fun. I get to go, like, I go to, like, different countries, and I, I don't deserve to go. Like, I don't know where these countries are at. I just go. I didn't learn about any of them. Like, I learned about Tennessee. I learned about the states that touched us in case they attacked. And, yeah, and I was told the rest was Europe, and that's where all the gays live. So, I didn't have a passport, you know? I was young. I got to go to Bahrain, which was fun. I, someone's from Bahrain. Are you really from, that's crazy. I, I had no idea it was a country, I'll be honest with you. Three years ago, I'd have called you a liar because you're from Bahrain. I literally thought it was the guy we were meeting. Like that's what I just assumed. I just walked around Bahrain's airport like, hey, do you know this guy Bahrain? He's supposed to meet us here. Is he somewhere near here? When we went to Bahrain, we were doing, we did comedy with the troops. We I don't have like a huge following in Bahrain, but I could start though with the one guy right here. So it's one at a time. I, so we go over there and when you do comedy with the troops, you stay on an army base, but in Bahrain, you can actually leave the base and go to like the downtown Bahrain. So, <laughs> They tell you, when you go out there, they're like, look, it's safe, just don't draw attention to yourself. So they're like, don't wear American t-shirts and stuff. And you're like, all right, that's fine, no American t-shirts. So what are you gonna do about the white on my skin? <laughs> yeah. That's probably gonna be the issue if I 
I don't want him to come up like, excuse me, are you Muslim? Uh, Southern Muslim, actually. <laughs> Is that? My dad was a deacon, so. That... <laughs> you know where I really want to go visit? Uh, Cambodia. That's where it's at, guys. Like, I, mean, I don't know where it's at, but I know that's where it's at. <laughs> so that's the good part, you know? Here's what they have in Cambodia. This is a for real, legit tourist attraction that they have. You can shoot a rocket launcher at a cow. <laughs> yeah, that's one of their options, all right? And I know, you're like, all right, I bet it's pricey. So, no, it's not, actually. It's very reasonably priced, which is nice. It's only 400 bucks. That's not that bad of a deal to shoot a rocket launcher at a cow. And if you're like, well, what if we don't hit it? You know, is it really worth it to take the family there? Yes, it is, all right? No one hits it. Everybody, no one shoots it. They're like, I do this a lot at home. Like, this is kind of... And they're good dudes. They give you 200 bucks back if you don't hit it. So, that's a good business. Why would you not support a business like that? I, my favorite thing was, like, how they had to come up with that price, 400 bucks. What on earth are you gauging that off of? Like, someone's like, 500, let's not get greedy with it. I feel, I've been doing some studies, and you can fist fight a goat for 100 bucks down the street. He's not even into it. We're using equipment, so. That would be an unbelievable way to hunt a rocket launcher. They just shoot, like, at the woods and kill. It's like a buffet. You kill, like, a lot of stuff. That's nice. That'd be fun. Animals have it the worst, the worst. They die terrible deaths. I heard a story, this kid, he had two goldfish. So he grabbed one of them, he squeezed it, it exploded. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. I don't feel bad for that goldfish. Like, you know, he died quickly. I feel bad for the other goldfish that just has to deal with that trauma now. <laughs> you know how insane that would be? They're not gonna buy this kid another fish. He's killing them. Like, he's got a fl Imagine if you're locked in a room with someone and they just exploded. It would change your life forever. You're like, can I get someone else to talk to? They're like, no. You're like, what? I'm just gonna deal with this in my own head? This is the worst life ever. I still like to eat animals, too, though. Like, I don't... That story doesn't make me not eat animals. I, I like chicken a lot. I'm a big fan of chicken. It's weird now, because I went to the store the other day to buy some, and when I was there, they have, now they have like two kinds of chicken that you can buy. So they have a free range chicken is one, and then they have, I guess, like a not free range. <laughs> like I think his parents were divorced or something. I don't, I don't know. So <laughs> they want you to eat the free range chicken, which is a chicken that is allowed to roam free. Uh, obviously not now, like he is dead <laughs> at the store. But they still have a list of his hobbies on the package, which I thought, eh, that's pretty nice of them, you know? But I, like, I don't want to eat that chicken. I feel bad. I don't eat a chicken that had a dream, and that was that chicken. <laughs> Life was great for that guy. I just want a miserable, not free-range chicken. I want to eat a chicken that when they killed it, he was like, look, I'm ready for this, all right? <laughs> this is brutal. This is the worst. Oh, when I was at uh, when I was at the grocery store, I got caught like in this weird like thing with this dude. So I was standing in line, and I was behind this guy, this white guy, and I he pulled out the white race card. Now I don't know if y'all knew we had a card, but <laughs> he like had one. So I'm standing behind him, and I just hear him like argue, like I hear him just go like, uh, "What is it? Because I'm white? Is that why you're doing this? Because I'm white?" And he looked at me like I'm his brother, like, hey, are you gonna get involved? Are you gonna come on? I was like sitting there, I was like, no, I, I'm not getting involved in this. I'm not ready for something like this. I think, I think you're the first guy ever to try this, to be honest with you. I'm not prepared at all. If you wanted me to help you, you should have pulled me aside earlier. You should have grabbed me like, look, I'm gonna make history today. Do you want to be a part of this or not? It's your call.
So I'm married. Do we have a lot of married people here tonight? A few? Some? That's fun. It's fun. I don't know. I've been married four years now, and uh, it is, it's getting pretty serious, to tell you the truth. <laughs> a, lot, a lot more serious than I thought. I always have... Like, I got other buddies that are getting married now, so they always, like, want to come talk to me. So, like, I always tell them, they're like, what's it like? I'm like, here's what it is. I'm just telling everybody. Marriage is like, you ever go to a concert and you see a mosh pit, and you're like, you know what? I'm going to go get in that mosh pit. <laughs> but then once you get in it, you're like, I do not want to be in this mosh pit <laughs> at all. I am going to leave and go get some beer. Then the mosh pit's like, didn't you drink last night? All right, mosh pit, why don't you get off my back? and let me live my life. <laughs> Why? <laughs> my wife's good though, she's put up, she's put up through a, a ton with me. Like she, I remember three months into our, our marriage, one night I came home and I was like really drunk. I was hammered and I know she loves that. So <laughs> I spoil her a little bit. I'm like a pretty decent guy. So, we go to bed, and, uh, all right, I'll be honest with you, I peed the bed. <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't have. I was pretty good, though. I kind of, like, blamed it on her. Like, I, <laughs> I remember, I just woke up, and I go, hey, uh, what's wet, all right? Did you pour a perfect circle of water underneath me? A flawless circle. <laughs> she... <laughs> She was like, no, you peed the bed. What is wrong with you? Did I marry you or did I have you? I have no idea <laughs> at this point. <laughs> you know what it is? Here's what it is. Guys, uh, we're just not good. Guys are not good at marriage, all right? It's not our fault. We weren't prepared for it like women are, your whole life is built just preparation for marriage. Look at all every toy you played with. When you're a baby, they give you a baby doll. So they give you a baby when you're a baby. <laughs> you don't even know you're alive yet, and they're like, look, I would probably start figuring this out. <laughs> like, this is where it's going. <laughs> then they give you Barbie and Ken. They live in a little house together. And that is where you learn how to make drama. You get... <laughs> you get the best. You're the best. Then you would play house. Like you would, like, fake vacuum. Just fake vacuum with your friends. And that was awesome. And it's weird, because like when I see my wife vacuum now, I'm like, she is living her childhood dream. <laughs> She's made it. As a, guy, as a guy, we don't have any of that. What do we, like, what do we, we play fort? You gotta keep everybody out of where you are. <laughs> Especially girls. The only toys we had were Transformers and Ninja Turtles. Those are not even real things. <laughs> None of them had wives. They weren't married. <laughs> I, I never played with my Ninja Turtles and I had them going to fight Shredder. And then Michelangelo was like, Hey, can y'all give me two seconds? My wife just showed up and she looks furious about something. What, what do you want from me? And she's like, what are y'all doing? What's that April skank doing here? You're like, listen, she's a reporter. I got in trouble with my wife because like on her, on her last birthday, I, I got her an oven all right, pretty nice oven, take it easy. And the reason I bought an oven, cause like, I know, like the vacuum, her other favorite toy as a kid was the Easy Bake Oven. So to go with her big girl vacuum, I got her. I... <laughs> So to go with her big girl vacuum, I got her a like grown-up adult oven. 
Like there was heart behind it. Like that's not, you know, like that's not impressive. If she came home and bought me a truck and it turned into a live robot, I would lose my mind, freak out. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Thank you.